Welcome back. All right, did you, uh, is everybody here who should be here? Is there anybody here who shouldn't be? Uh, is there anybody in the other room? No, okay. And, and the other room has been cleared out? The one off? Okay, so very good. So it looks like less are here than left. Perhaps they got lost on the journey. Okay, did you, did you get a little bit more insight into things? You can admit if you didn't, and then point fingers. Did you? <laughs> I think it's correct. I think you're, you're correct. I think so. On second thought, but I better look again. <laughs> All right, so we have had quite a uh, presentation of factors. Uh, Egyptian mythology and uh, goddesses of the underworld. We've had the... Um, they have these, there's such a scorpionic, plutonic element in the Egyptian myths. The whole idea of Osiris and the underworld and uh, bringing us from this sub-Buddhic underworld in, with wings into liberation. We've had the asteroid goddesses. They ha really have to be considered along with others. I have some asteroid positions I don't want to talk about. There are <laughs> and I said, oh my God, that's accurate. Okay, so anyway. Whatever asteroids are, uh, and they do, you know, they look like fragmentations, but the psyche is there somehow. They do seem to work. We've had a very intriguing uh, proposition concerning uh, prenatal charts. Really intriguing. So we have to experiment with these things. You know, I mean, I think someone who said um, something about the prenatal charts, that it is an area where there is much speculation and perhaps... I forget what was said, you, you, you recall it. Uh, so who, who read that? Was it David or someone? That not so much is known, but much is speculated. So we have to test these things out. As soon as we get a little bit of reincarnational astrology going, we'll be in good shape. We're a long way from being able to trace a soul over a number of centuries and get an accurate birth time for each birth. Uh, but I, you know, that, that'd be marvelous. And of course, DK could do that if he wanted to do that. Yeah? Have you? Okay. All right, well, that's, that's good, and may they be accurate. Okay. I did, <laughs> many of us have intimations of what may have been, you know, little snippets and other more solid memories, but we need really reincarnational research to do the kinds of things with astrology we want to be able to do. Um, and then, you know, we, we've had the labors of Hercules, complete... <laughs> complete with all that Aries can be when the internet doesn't work. Um, but I assume that uh, they'll know we have a sense of humor. Anyway, good information was given, and although I couldn't hear you who couldn't hear you who couldn't hear you, somehow it all came together. Um, and our work has been uh, to work with the uh, sextile, a very important pattern, a very important integrative pattern, I understand that the uh, philosopher Nietzsche had a grand sextile, everything sextile, everything else, you know, all the way around the 360 degrees. Maybe you know some people like that. It's a very integrative aspect, but Lawson did illustrate how there can be slight uh, disagreements between harmonious aspects. Um, we, we had um, a real strong application of all of this knowledge to an interesting disciple uh, who had... Uh, certain issues. I mean, all these disciples were very human in a, in a certain way, and most of them probably had not taken the second degree, you know, because generally when they had taken the second degree, he was trying to isolate them a little bit and get them out of action and uh, allow them to go deeply within to them, themselves and cut down on the extroversion. Uh, so most of them were still having that, that degree in sight, I would say. And that, that kind of tells us uh, where we all are, in a way, you know. Uh, the majority of people in this movement uh, maybe it may have, may have taken the first degree and, uh, or, or are, are applying to it. Or, you know, if you become an accepted disciple, it's already a step, and that's not necessarily at the second degree. So we have to be humble about things. The, the, major, um, the major mantra for determining your um, initiatory status is to... Uh, Speculate, dream, and hope, and then subtract two. 
and all will generally <laughs> be, be accurate, you know. It's hard to subtract two from the second degree, though, isn't it? A little humiliating. <laughs> well, I think it's not so important. Um, I think it's not so important what the degree may be, but that we become empowered to help in a very needy world in these last 12 years of the forerunner. I think when we're in the flow of our service and giving everything we can, uh, what we need to know about these things will be given to us. And uh, I'm sure that the masters are eager to have us advance as uh, quickly and as safely as we may so that we can be of some greater use. I, I can't remember where it was. Maybe Keith remembers. But I remember this DK was talking. Uh, some disciple was saying how much he or she wanted to serve and uh, use me, basically. It was uh, use me. And then he answered, in essence, what makes you so sure you're useful? <laughs> so <laughs> it was something of that nature. <laughs> and we could all ask ourselves uh, those questions. We have a lot of hard work to do upon ourselves, but also we need to planetarize our consciousness in, a, in what I think will be a very uh, demanding 12 years coming up. A time, you know, uh, we're told in 2025 that the first uh, First plans, in, in all probability, will probably be laid in 2025 for the externalization in a concrete sense. So that's an externalization of the hierarchy near the end, you know, when he was writing. And uh, so we have 12 years to give it our best shot to prepare the consciousness of humanity for these uh, developments uh, in a world which may seem like it's falling apart. Because, you know, whenever there is a withering of the law and the uprising of lawlessness on all sides, then I manifest myself from age to age for the, um, how does it say, uh, strengthening or something of that nature of those who do good and the destruction of those who do evil. So that's the Bodhisattva's intention. And he needs, you know, the army of Maitreya is needed, as it is said in Agni Yoga. And that means us with uh, an army of light and uh, love and uh, spiritual will, all those good things. Uh, and uh, selflessness over the next 12 years when we might want to be doing other things, uh, I think that the disciple is never so needed as now. So gear up, you know, and uh, overcome your weaknesses. As one who has overcome all of his, I can advise you this is a very good thing. Overcome all weaknesses and make yourself useful. This is the thing. So in these esoteric astrology presentations, um, we try to take a look at the great abstract. And we do have some people that represent that. You know, It can give you the big cosmic view. We had a lot of that last night. That was great. Uh, we also have had the nitty gritty. And that's very good, too. We want to be able to apply everything. You know, highest and lowest meet. You know, sometimes I f feel that people use that mantra the lowest and the lowest meet. You know? and in other words, it's just got to be practical, practical, practical. But there's also got to be the archetype to be made practical. And that's what I think we represent here to a degree. We stretch the mind, stretch the speculative powers, uh, uh, open booty manas if possible, give us the chance for a little bit of intuition, and then try to bring it right down and make it useful to ourselves and others. So I like the stretch. I like the reach. Who knows, maybe next year we can have 20 astrological teachers. I think we keep going until we outnumber the students. I mean, this is, this, <laughs> of course, we're all students of each other, and that's for sure. So I hope you got something out of this. Um, now, tonight, um, well, we, we segue pretty quickly into the uh, study of the rays. And this is an advancing seven ray seminar. So, uh, you know, we're going to assume that some of you will be here tonight. I know it's an inconvenience to have the food off campus, so to speak, but uh, we're working on that. Um, and we begin at 7 o'clock, I believe, yes. And, and tonight we'll have our revelations session, which will mean that you'll have a chance to review the functioning of your rays during your last year and see how your ray hypothesis is holding up. Because, uh, you know, I, I think we should reflect every year on our current ray hypothesis and look for confirmations or denials if possible. And then we have, I think, some very interesting things that we'll tell you about more tonight. But I think it's quite practical and quite psychological what we'll be getting into. 
and we'll tell you about that tonight when you show up. If you don't show up, you won't know, you know, and the secrets will be revealed, let me promise you. All right. Um, yes, right here. It's the nice thing about this is the room doesn't change, and neither does the, per well, the personnel changes a little bit, but, you know, we're all in it together, rays and astrology. Uh, is there any concluding thing that anyone would like to say that is not of great length? <laughs> I don't mean to inhibit you. All right, now, David, I bet I know your subject. Go ahead. Save me about your Vulcan position. Save me about your Vulcan position, if you haven't already. You can be sure you have one. Okay. Uh, yes, David has his theory about where to find Vulcan in your chart. So, uh, so it's worth to hear and to examine and see if it correlates with what you think. Uh, any other uh, parting remarks? Yes. Thank you, my oh, thank you, brother KB. <laughs> thank you. My God, yes. Yeah, stay through the whole. Was it? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And you stayed through the whole thing. Uh, that's a that's a miracle. Now that's a miracle. <laughs> well, okay. Um, the the conference. Oh, yes, yes, BL, yes. <laughs> That's right. I just wanted to say that I got several emails this morning from the participants in our webinar, and they really enjoyed working with you guys. They, they had a great time yesterday, and I wanted to let you all know that. That's great. Okay, that's good. Very good. It widens, it widens the field, you know what I mean? You're not, yeah, I mean... It's come to the point where, where, you know, Sheldon did this a year and Helena did it a year or two ago, but they have a choir singing all over the world. How many thousand people? Is it 3,000? Virtual choir? Virtual choir? Amazing. And they, can, and they can make it all sound in rhythm and, you know, precise. And 2,000 people or whatever singing all over the world. So we ought to be able to pull off an astro seminar, shouldn't we, you know? If they can do that. Good. Well, let's just have a little um, concluding. I want to thank, of course, all of our uh, astrological team. You know, they come here and they give themselves to this, and they even prepare, and they're here to offer for you uh, what they know. And uh, you know, in my own, I, I you know, I, I, I even go further than they do. I offer you what I don't know. So <laughs> we'll just have a little. Reflection. <clears throat> short, short. So let's go immediately into that sense of being all together in this. Egoically together here. egoically together with the new group of world servers, with men and women of goodwill everywhere, globally. And really with all humanity, whether in the body or out of the body, it's one one soul, one consciousness with many different apertures. It's one being. And when we aspire rightly and dream correctly, and sense the ideal and take the steps to purify, to fulfill the ideal, then we can really contribute something to the elevation of the one being, humanity.
So we trust that everyone will do his part, her part. All will do their part to make the maximum intelligent, powerful, loving contribution to elevating this being over the coming years, which can prove demanding. And we go into the rest of the conference with the attitude of learning more, participating more, strengthening our perspective, and bringing in inspiration to do a better job in serving the one being. And of course, beyond that, the planet and so forth, but we have plenty to deal with with humanity itself. And so, the mantra of the new group of world servers, may the power of the one life, May the power of the one life pour through the group of all true servers. May the love of the one soul characterize the lives of all who seek to aid the great ones. May we fulfill our part in the one work through self-forgetfulness harmlessness, and right speech. shape. You have some free time now. Go to the swimming pool and think about your rays. <laughs> and we'll see you. We'll see you at seven o'clock. <laughs>